Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to our channel TM Square and this is me Neeraj Kumar Singh welcoming you once again to another brand new playlist and certainly we are the channel who gives you the best free quality content on preparing for ISTQB certifications and yet another new playlist is going to be created here in this particular playlist we'll be talking about the test automation engineer version 2.0 which is much awaited from a lot of you and uh, I'm pretty much sure that uh, I slightly delayed it just for a reason. The reason was uh, as 1.0 has not yet retired in many countries and they are still offering the examination on that. For me, creating 2.0 playlist would sometimes misguide the people as they start listening to those and start working on these courses. So it might be a little complicated to justify people that which one to follow. But as far as I had only one playlist on internet, that would have been one of the easiest way to stick to till it gets retired. But anyways, uh, just because we are coming closer to the retirement of 1.0, we can get started and by the time we complete it, we will have something more meaningful in most of the bodies across the world. So to get started in this particular tutorial, we'll be introducing you to this particular examination and helping you understand what has changed and what exactly is the syllabus and outline which someone can look for, uh, forward to prepare well for this certification. Well, to get started, of course, the very first thing we'll be talking about is quickly introducing you to ISTQB, given that at this point of time, you have already completed your foundation level. So I'll be keeping it to the point and crisp. So the very first information we have is introduction to ISTQB itself, which we all know that is an international software testing qualification board and helps you to get qualified and certified with several certifications. And uh, the more important thing here is to bring to you is uh, the certifications what we currently have with us. So certainly ISTQB offers a lot of certifications which we are aware of, but if in case you are new to it, you can quickly see the certification path is right from the bottom. Of course, the journey starts with CTFL, which is Certified Tester Foundation Level. And uh, once you're certified with the foundation level, you have gates open in three different directions. You can look forward to get Agile certified. You can also talk about specialist certification or you can move to the next core level. In this particular certification, we are talking about specialist and this uh, pretty much covers uh, many of the testing portfolio specific certifications. Like if you are a test professional into something specific, like say for example, if you talk about security tester, automation tester, usability tester, performance tester, or acceptance tester, then you can look forward to add some of these certifications to your portfolio. But if you say, no, I, I might be a functional tester itself, but working in a domain specific uh, you know, industry, then we may have something relevant for you like AI tester, automotive tester, gambling industry tester, game tester or mobile application tester. You can look forward to have any one of these uh, as additional certification as soon as you are done with your CTFL that is foundation level. Also, on the other hand, we do have Agile related certification. But for this, I would like to further add that if you have taken your foundation level on 3.1, then you can go ahead and take the Agile tester first and then look forward to have Agile technical tester. But if you have taken 4.0 ISTQB foundation, then you can directly move to advanced level, which is Agile technical tester. The reason is 4.0 has covered a lot of topics related to 4.0, that is Agile, and certainly does not require Agile technical or uh, Agile foundation level to be taken by them. So that's where take your certifications accordingly when it comes to Agile. And one more additional on the specialist side we have for Agile. This is for leadership at scale, which is Scale Agile Framework. So you can go ahead and look forward to that as one more certifications to be added. And in the middle, certainly we have the advanced and export level certifications. And these are more for your designation specific. So you can look forward to add test analyst. If you are a functional tester, then you can look forward to technical test analyst. If you are a non-functional tester and test, test manager does not need a justification. Certainly anyone who is qualified enough to manage their entire test organization can look forward to uh, add this value. Again, there are no sequences to take this examination. You can take test analyst and test manager, or if you want, you can directly take test manager as well. So you can take any of three or all the threes as well. And once you're done with advanced level certifications, you can move to the next level, which is export level. And at the export level, certainly you become more of like a consultant of testing and look forward to work on each subject precisely. 
and here you have multiple other certifications which could be uh, an area of attractions to uh, get certified further which would help you a lot to get certified and increase your value in the market if you have spent a little bit long time in the world of testing. Further to continue, of course, uh, when we talk about the ISTQB introduction, uh, many people are very much aware of this, that local body conducting examinations are your country specific member board. So which country you are from, you should search for that. If in case you do not have a country member board, then you can take some of these examination from generic bodies like ISQI, Brightest, or any other body which can uh, be your neighboring country as well. Okay, so in case your country doesn't have a member board, you are free to take from these general bodies or any other country which is eligible to conduct examinations for other countries. These all things can be found easily on ISTQB website or if you need help, just comment below. I'll be here to guide you well, right? Further to add, of course, the cost of the examination as usual will vary from country to country. So you will have to find out what exactly your uh, member board is offering you for this examination. However, when it comes to India, uh, it costs you around 7,000 rupees inclusive of all the taxes. And uh, yeah, it's cheapest in the all over the world because of course, Indian market offers in INR, which is certainly cheaper than the dollars, right? So you can always look forward to take uh, right from India, which has equal value across the world. So certification remains valid internationally. So there are no differentiation between them. Also to add uh, the validity would remain for a lifetime. So you don't really have to rewrite the examination. So those who have already appeared for 1.0, uh, they don't really have to take the examination once again, but this would be completely your personal interest. Should you wish to take the latest and greatest syllabus, you can always do that completely out of your interest. Further to add here, of course, uh, we do have the details of this examination in particular. Quite often, these are the more important things what someone should be aware of. Number one, the prerequisite. Of course, the prerequisite for this examination is CTFL. If you are here and you have not done your foundation level examinations yet, then this is not the examination for you at this point of time. You should look forward to uh, start with foundation level. Once you have the results handy with you, you don't have to wait for the certificate to arrive. If you have the results with you, you can proceed with applying to the next certification, right? The examination will remain objective. Uh, many people assume that the advanced level examinations or specialist examinations are subjective. No, these examinations remain objective itself. That means you will be provided with multiple choice questions. And uh, of course, uh, most of the questions will have four options to be uh, given and uh, one right answer. But certainly some of the questions will have five options and you will have to select two right answers. You have to be extra cautious for these because in a flow, when suddenly five options appear, we don't realize that and we take only one right answer, right? You have to be extra careful that how many options you are seeing on the screen and uh, make sure when it is five options, you select two right answers because selecting just one will not give you any score, but making both of them right would give you full marks, right? Similarly, if I continue further, the question number of questions would remain the same as that of foundation level. 40 questions will be asked to you and the scoring system will be different because of course uh, each question will not carry one mark. They will have different marks because the total marks possible for this examination is 64. Okay, total marks possible is 64 and certainly uh, the duration as it is a little complicated examination than foundation level, the duration for this exam will be 90 minutes for people taking the examination in English. But if you're taking from a country uh, which is non-native uh, than English, so of course you can have additional 25% of time, okay, which will be almost around 20 minutes. So uh, you will have additional 20, 20, 20 minutes to add to your certification time if you are taking from any country where your primary language is not English. So be it Spanish, be it India, like we don't have English as our primary language, we get additional 25% time, right? So that is where it is another benefits for people who come from a non-native language. Uh, not in non-English countries and taking the examinations there, all right? Let's move on further. Of course, here uh, the schedule can be certainly scheduled online and you can take the examination on any particular day. There are a lot of bodies conducting examination on daily basis and you should just check the schedule with your country member board when they are available. And this examination again, as usual, can be taken online or offline and it's not restricted that you can only take offline or online. So you can just approach your body and find out if they are offering you both the exam. Because see, again, country member boards have their own provision. 
Some country member boards offer some examination only in offline mode and some country boards offer both offline and online. So you need to check this with your country member board, whether they are offering you online and offline both or not. Okay. And then you can choose uh, which one you are, whichever you want to opt for. Certainly uh, location and value matters if you're taking offline and you should find out uh, what are the centers available in your uh, country and your city. And based on that, you can schedule your offline test in one of the centers and take the examination at your own comfort. Coming to the most important thing about this examination, that is passing criteria, which is 42 or more out of 64 marks, that is 65% as usual. So 65% is a common criteria of success in ISTQB examinations, but the scoring systems are different. So you must know what is the minimum cutoff to succeed. So 65% of 64 marks is 42. So you need to get at least 42 marks to pass this examination. And uh, if I talk about any additional information, we have discussed already that this is the latest revision on ISTQB Test Automation Engineer and you are watching the 2.0 release of this particular syllabus. However, I have another playlist which is 1.0. So if in your country they are still offering 1.0 examination, then you can watch that playlist as well. Right? I will give you the link at the end. Also, uh, to further continue, uh, here we are talking about the syllabus. The syllabus is certainly consisting of many factors what an automation test engineer should be aware of and includes different topics right from introduction to objectives of test automation and uh, then we will be talking about what exactly it takes to prepare for the test automation in terms of readiness, tool, environment and many other factor. Then we'll be certainly discussing on what exactly the automation architecture is all about then what it takes to implement the test automation in any organization. However, we'll also be talking about implementing and deploying deployment of the strategies for the test automation because we understand when it comes to manual and automation, things are differently done. So it has to be defined with a well-identified strategy that what exactly is the ROI and what exactly is the benefit you're going to have when implementing automation. So it's not as simple as like downloading a file from internet and starting, starting to use it right from the next day. You should really have some good plans done to deal with the risk involved with it, what are the mitigation steps and how you can make the most out of using this particular tool, right? Further to add, of course, uh, test automation reporting and matrices should be understood. So we'll be covering that in chapter six, and then understanding how exactly we can verify the entire test automation solution, where test automation solution is more of like the entire tool chain, including the script, including the repository, reporting matrices, or data supply and many other things. So we will be looking to understand that in more detail. And finally, continuous improvement, which is sust sustainability of continuously using this tool and having consistent benefit from that. So your improvement should be consist consistent as well and continuous forever, right? So put together, this entire syllabus would cover uh, the whole concept into eight different chapters. Many people quite often ask me that, do we have any kind of hands-on or practical involved in this examination? The answer is absolutely no. It would remain completely dry and theoretical as much as possible. So we don't have any hands-on exercises involved here. And to further add, the last thing here is of course the K-levels as usual. If you have done your foundation, you know what the K-level represent. But this time, you will not be having K-1 topics. That means we consider that in foundation level, you have already covered the K-1 level topics. And this syllabus will only consist of K2, K3, K4. That means you will talk about details of like understanding, applying the concept back during the examination or scenarios where you will be asked to apply your skills, analyze a particular given scenario and come up with your solution. So that's what exactly would be the key information what someone should be aware of in order to prepare well for this examination. And this introductory tutorial helps you to understand the entire syllabus, examination, schedule, structure, scoring system, passing criteria, so that your mind is set up and you know what exactly it takes to crack this examination altogether. And that's where we would like to end this particular introductory session. However, we will be getting started with our very first chapter right from the next tutorial. So stay tuned for that. And that's all from this particular tutorial. So should you have anything else, feel free to comment below team. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.
Thank you.